Uber versus everybody. An Uber driver gets an unexpected present for Christmas and a Muslim driver refuses a couple because of a Christmas ham. It's This Week in Rideshare News. I would like to start off this mini segment with what I would like to call Uber versus everybody. Quick news bites that will talk about Uber's litigation against cities, states, people, countries, you know, <laughs> normal stuff. Uber doesn't want to be pushed around and they're not going to take it from nobody. A New York state judge rules against the New York City law designed to control how much time rideshare drivers spend looking for passengers. This cruise law would limit the amount of time that drivers would spend looking, driving around, that sort of thing in, in Manhattan. They would cut their drive time down by 10%. So the victory comes as a relief to the rideshare company. They actually live too because they claim that they want to protect the flexibility of drivers, so they're able to do that. In another Uber versus everybody moment, Germany rules on Thursday that the company doesn't have the necessary license to operate a business that employs for hire in Germany. Now, if they do drive, they can be fined up to 250,000 pounds per ride if they don't comply with the court's decision. Uh, the company can appeal this ruling and they would be able to continue to operate there until another ruling is met. Um, an Atlanta woman is suing Uber after she claimed she was thrown off a Uber scooter, uh, the device, and suffered multiple head injuries. Yikes. Um, the mother of five had 15 stitches in her head and reconstructive facial surgery. She's also dealing with some neurological issues as well. Uber declined to comment on this, but I believe this is the first of a wave of like cases just like this. There's just way too many people that are on these things that probably shouldn't be using them in traffic and stuff. And I just was like, when are we going to start seeing these cases? They're coming in now. An Uber driver received an unexpected present from his passenger this past Christmas. Antonio Cavallar was driving some folks when they asked to stop and he said yes. Um, and they gave him a scratch lottery ticket as a way to say thank you. Turns out that this ticket was worth $500. Okay, that is pretty awesome. Antonio is quoted as saying, never know what's going to happen when you do something nice and to not expect anything out of it. And I agree. Although I've never received a lottery ticket, I've definitely received some tips and just some words of gratitude. And so during this season, it can be particularly hard for some folks. Hell, it can be hard for you too. I think that a little kindness goes a long way, especially with so much negativity going on out there. It's really nice to see that good people or folks that do good deeds are actually being rewarded for them. So kudos, Antonio. Lyft announces car rentals, but different than existing services. This service will allow drivers to rent cars at varied prices due to the car or due to the date and time of booking. So cars will be available to be booked for a few hours or up to two weeks. Now the article that I got this from states that a sedan could go for about $31 a day, but in another scenario, a weekend booking for a car could be 149 per day. So um, it varies. Uh, they offer a credit, a $20 credit for people to get to the rental place and home when they're done with their rental. Currently, this is happening only in Los Angeles in the San Francisco Bay Area where they have been testing for a few months. So if you guys are in those markets, you probably have already seen the promo information for this. Um, I'm really curious to see how this works. My only interest is in any rental programs that can that can really lend themselves to be affordable. It's very expensive to rent a car for rideshare, even though I think it's important if you can to save your own vehicle from this kind of wear and tear. You really have to be damn near like full time to actually reap the benefits of a rental. And until you know they actually make renting affordable for drivers, um, I would say proceed with caution, but make sure that you are realistic about what you expect, how much money you can make on top of the rental fee. Uber seeks to replace loaner cars and shuttles for auto bodies and dealerships. So Uber for Business has partnered with several auto body locations and offer courtesy rides for customers, for guests of body shops and dealerships. I actually had one of these types of fears the other day. I picked someone up 
whose car was being um, serviced and I dropped her off at work. She said that she had rarely used the service and so she had a lot of questions to me about Uber in general. So maybe this is a way for them to introduce this to a certain market of folks who haven't tried it yet, but she found it to be very convenient. These courtesy rides are also good for drivers uh, because that means more business, more requests for you. The only thing I need clarity on is tips. Uh, who will be responsible for the tip? Are drivers given anything on top of the fare, you know, to alleviate that? In my case, it appeared to be a normal Uber ride. Um, there wasn't a tip <laughs> and I'm not surprised by that, but it that is a question that comes to mind. So if anyone has an answer, let me know. And now for my favorite segment, this one is going to be controversial. What would you do in this case? Okay, so if a passenger violates a religious rule for you, would you pick them up? An Australian couple uh, were refused a ride when their Muslim Uber driver discovered that they were holding a Christmas ham. Now, I do not know why this is news. It seems very simple to me. And I don't have a problem with pork. I love bacon and all of that. But I do feel mm -hmm. like this driver has a right to make that decision. I feel like when an Uber drive, as an Uber driver, you should not become void of your opinion or your morals or religious beliefs. You know, I feel like there's a fine line between discriminatory um, towards people for their race, ethnicity, and religious beliefs. But we're not talking about these people being turned away because of their race and ethnicity. It is literally <laughs> based off of the pig getting in the car. Um, I now I did some research on the internet and I am, want you to understand I'm not a Muslim and I'm not a spokesperson for them. But uh, from what I found, I said Muslims that are, Muslims are forbidden to eat pork. The restriction of pork is not a lifestyle, but rather a divine command. And obeying that command is an act of worship. So knowing this, I don't know why anyone would expect for him to just let it slide and let a little pork be transported for the sake of them just getting to their destination. Um, I do know some drivers who won't allow you to bring food in their car at all, regardless of what it is, because they don't want to have to deal with the smells or the cleanup fee. Do you guys agree with this Uber driver or do you feel that one should cast their religious beliefs aside when you turn on the Uber app? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. And if, hey, if you do nothing else, I would love to hear from you. A thumbs up on this video would be great. It lets me know that you're out there, you're listening, you're watching this, and you appreciate what we're doing. If you're not sure about who I am or what I do, my name is Cecily and I have a channel called Drive Girl Drive. You can hit me up on YouTube and Facebook. I've got pages in both places. All right, guys, take care and be safe.